Okay guys, how you going? Thanks for coming to, or thanks for watching today's episode of Ask Anthony. Uh, today with me I've got Jamie, uh, Jamie Vanbridge, he's a good friend of mine, uh, also a windsurfer, and today we've grabbed his boom. What we're going to work on is harness lines. Uh, this is something that I get asked questions about all the time. Uh, as you can see, most guys, uh, uh, sort of on tour, or freestyle guys, or wave guys, race guys, all have their harness lines set up pretty differently. That's pretty easy for us to figure out because basically your harness lines are unique to you. So, for instance, someone like myself who's 6'1", weighs 90 kilos, uh, um, and <laughs> weighs 110 kilos, and Jamie, who weighs how much? About 70. About 70 kilos, and what, you 6'5", 9? I'd like to say 6 foot. Yeah, 5'9", and a bit. Um, he's going to have a very, very different setup to me. And I'm hopefully I'm just going to explain to you quickly how that works. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Jamie to get him to the press-up position, right in front of us. So make sure you come right forward so the guys right. can see. Okay, guys, can you see that okay? Yep, perfect. So what we're looking for here, we're looking for the distance from his shoulder. So head up, looking forward, looking at the camera like you were looking forwards, windsurfing along. What we want to work on, we want to work on what we call the triangle. That triangle is from his shoulders, down to his knees, up to his hands, back to his shoulders. If he was actually windsurfing now, he'd actually have a little bit more of a bent knee and his hands out in front of us, and that triangle would be pretty, pretty equal. That's something that most professionals work on in pretty much every sport, the biomechanics of it, making sure it works. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make James, Jamie's harness lines a couple of inches shorter. And at the same time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise his boom by about six inches. Okay, so push your arms up about six foot, six inches. Perfect, now bend your arms a bit, knees off the deck. Cool, cool. As we can see here, we like to call this the Polynesian crapping position. This is a really bad position, and this is because his setup's all wrong. From here, Jamie, I want to see you do a forward somersault. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to happen. Cool, come and grab a seat. Okay, cool. What that, what that little test does, what that little example does, is, is prove that he's in the wrong position. Because if you're in the wrong position, things like jibing, tacking, forward loops, back loops, tabletops, push loop to forward loops, all that sort of stuff is going to become difficult. So when you're choosing your harness line, what you should simply get to do is get yourself an adjustable one, get someone to take some pictures of you standing towards the beach with what setup you think is correct, come and have a look at it, and see if it's conducive to a jibing environment, forward loop environment, and if it gets you in the correct posture. What we should be able to do is, when we're sailing along, we should be able to have the, the, middle, of the harness, middle of your hands, middle of the harness lines, right into your sternum. That's a pretty comfortable position. If you're in a pretty comfortable position when you're hooked in and you're laid over, as you stand up and sheet out to go into your jibe, there should be a pretty good separation between the boom and your shoulders, and then working on that triangle, making sure it works correctly. If that's not happening, and your harness lines are too short, it's just not right. Yep. Sorry, I've got some food on my face. It's just not right. So what that means is, is if it's not right, jibing, attacking, all that stuff is not going to work. There are some of you right now that are at home going, <laughs> there are some of you guys at home that are going, that's not right, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Go and watch a video of some of the guys on the world tour, some of the best windsurfers in the world, and check out how long their harness lines are. You know, you've got people like Kaoli, like um, Cialdi, he's got 34 inch harness lines. Um, Brazinho, he's not a bad windsurfer, he's, he's on 34s as well. Um, most of the good wave guys have got a good bit of separation happening. If your harness lines are less than 30 or 28, then you've got to have a hard time sailing. So when you do get your harness line, uh, Jamie here, he's got his set up. Um, he likes his, what size it is? 30s. His are 30s. You know, he's 70 kilos and got some short arms. We work quite a bit on his sailing, and he's a good sailor, but ultimately, that's a pretty good length for him. I'm a big fan of adjustables because you could go out in a day where it's dead flat and want a slightly longer harness line because you want to get your sail more upright, you want to get a little bit more away from it, or you can go out when it's super choppy, want to be make sure you're standing up you know, with a sail upright um, and allowing that harness line to get a little bit shorter. So coming back to it, your harness lines, they should be, you should be able to get your triangle happening. If you're sailing along and you're too close to it, that's not going to work. If you're hanging off it, that's not going to work either. Which brings me to the second point, which is also very, very important when choosing your harness line. Your harness. I do apologise if my shorts come up. We've just been out paddleboarding. So, when we've got a harness, what you want to look at with your harness, you want to make sure you won for if you're windsurfing nowadays, because uh, you know, the sails work so well, we want the setup to be absolutely perfect. Make sure you've got yourself a chest plate. 
I see a lot of harnesses out there that have got just a loose, loose harness bar. The first thing we change when they come to me is put them in a harness that works. You know, this is an iron harness, doesn't have to be an iron harness, there's plenty of good harnesses on the market. This just happens to be the one that I use. And what that does is it sticks on your chest and it doesn't allow the harness to move. If your harness bar, if you're hooked in and you can pull your harness, harness hook up, what that's changing, that's actually changing the length of your harness lines. It means you have to adopt, like we saw with Jamie earlier on, the Polynesian crapping position. That doesn't look good for anyone. Any questions you got, Jamie, on the harness lines? No, I think you covered it all. Just one question for the public at home. Why do different brands vary in length? That's an unbelievably good question. So there are some different brands out there. Um, obviously, you know, we I use Fanatic and Northern Ion. Um, there's plenty of other products out there that are just, uh, you know, uh, that are as good for harness lines and stuff like that. So when you get your lines and you find some that you like, you know, personally I use adjustables, but if you find the fixed ones that you like, keep keep one of them. And when you go into the shop to choose your new one, measure it up against them. It doesn't matter what number on it. It just matters how what works for you. Okay, Jamie, makes sense. Spot. Cool. Fantastic, guys. Thanks for coming to this episode of Ask Anthony, and thanks to Jamie for coming to us today, and hopefully we'll see you on the water soon. And Luke's naked. <laughs> Luke's naked. You can see that. <laughs>